McKenna, we're looking forward. Well, first, we're grateful that you're here and part of our community. But we, too, are looking forward to your personal growth and your journey at Tiffin University. So I was so excited to get to you that I just skipped coach. <laughs> well, I also didn't want the congressman to have a tough, I mean, the toughest act to follow, right? One of our students. So, um, so Joey, uh, in just a moment, I'm going to have you come up. But, boy, for, for those of you that don't know Joey Simcoe, you need to get to know Joey Simcoe. Um, and what I can say about him is he is just a quality individual. I've had the pleasure of working with him on this renovation for a number of months, being part of the process, being part of this solution. And I've learned that really he took over, a, it wasn't a new program, but it was really a program in, in its infancy. And as Lonnie said, I mean, he moved out of uh, facilities that you know, weren't optimal, right? And, and still achieved great success in terms of his ability to recruit students and then work with them and, and build them. And as I mentioned earlier, to, to even have our very first national champion individual here at the university. And in addition to that, what you may not know is that he has a, a biddy program. And for those that are unfamiliar, that's where he takes the little kids and teaches them. And that's awesome. And what you may not know is that he actually works with local law enforcement and brings them here to our facility to help teach them non-lethal ways uh, to, for them to defend themselves. So when we think about TU wrestling, right, I mean, oftentimes we hear about our success, buildings like this, um, being the first college or university in the state of Ohio to offer women's wrestling as an athletic uh, offering, but, but it goes far beyond that, much deeper in this community. And so that's largely due to Joey and his leadership and just the quality of person that he is. And so Joey, please come up and, and bless us with a few words. Thanks, Mitch. All right, as most of you guys know, I'm not really a talker, so I'm going to try to get through this. Uh, first off, I want to thank everyone for being here today. Uh, to help celebrate the dedication of Larry and Jeannie um, and, the, and the wrestling complex. Um, what this building and what this facility means to, to both the men's and women's programs uh, is immeasurable. We're extremely excited about the, the opportunities in which it provides us for our training. Um, <laughs> in, in eight short years, uh, starting year eight now, uh, you've heard from Lonnie and uh, a couple other people, Westgate was not quite what you would call a uh, mecca for wrestling, so to speak. Um, <laughs> the, between the happy garden um, and the dirt that came through the door, it was, it was, it was a rough go for the first year. Um, but with that being said, Westgate wasn't that bad either. Uh, as I'm sure Congressman Jordan will talk about, wrestling is, uh, is kind of a blue collar, nitty gritty, roll your sleeves up sport. So uh, Westgate wasn't bad, it just wasn't quite a home yet. Um, and with that, you know, as, a, as that not being a home, I kind of want to touch on the, the, the different hats that coaches wear. Uh, some days, you know, you will be a psychologist. Other days, we're a father. Other days, we're a brother. Some days, we're your best friend. And other days, you hate us. Um, and we get that. Um, but with that being said, one of the first things that I thought was the most important thing to do was to involve ourselves in the community. And some of the people have, have, that have spoke have touched on our, our community involvement with, with the youth. Uh, I truly believe that that was the first place to start because without youth wrestling, there will be no college wrestling. There is no pro for us. This is as good as it gets. Um, I believe in building the mindset that if I can get a kid interested when they're eight or nine years old, I have a chance to keep that kid when they're in college. And the beautiful thing is I'm starting to see that happen now. Some of the wrestlers behind you came through this youth program and are now freshmen or sophomores here at the university. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank TU for that, for providing us with the, with the facility, the time um, to mentor these young men, young women, and uh, help foster that love for wrestling and, and Tiffin University. Uh, one of the greatest parts of this youth club, like I said, was, was seeing these children become young men, young women, and now starting to come here. Uh, the local law enforcement probably was one of the coolest things we did. Uh, Officer Eric Aller is a TU grad, been a friend of mine for many years. Uh, we got together and we're talking about where we could train some uh, defense tactics, non-lethal 
um, subject control. So Eric and I actually approached uh, Lonnie Allen about it. Um, we started a instructor's course. Uh, we had a guy come down from Michigan, and it was it was an amazing event. Uh, we had officers from all over the state of Ohio. We had uh, uh, officer from Canada come down, um, officers from Michigan, Indiana, and these officers became certified to teach these tactics to their precincts and take that home. I thought that was a great thing to be a part of, especially with our law enforcement here at Tiffin University. Um, the other part of that that was really interesting to me was we actually got to work with the local PD, uh, which was very cool to have them come in and uh, I actually got to be the subject um, that they tried to arrest. That was pretty fun. So two or three people would attack me and I'd have to try to wrestle my way out of it. Um, very interesting. Uh, my favorite part was when the bigger officers would try to pick on me and I'd be able to weasel through it. Um, <laughs> anyway, through this community involvement um, and the buy-in from our student athletes, um, even though we didn't have this amazing facility behind us, we were able to accomplish some very, very great things. Uh, Mitch touched on some of it. Um, one of the things that really st stuck out in my mind when I was going through our history a little bit was our conference. So when we started out, uh, we wrestled five duels the first in our first conference tournament. And a duel meet consists of ten matches per duel. So there's 50 matches wrestled that day, and Tiffin University won three matches. Needless to say, we didn't win a duel. Uh, five short years later, we won the conference. It was the last year of that conference that Tiffin competed in it, um, and we won it at University of Finley. That's where I came from, so that felt even better. Uh, we went from zero national qualifiers to today we have 21. To become a national qualifier in the Division II level, uh, there is no bid process, there is no guaranteed. You have to place top four at your regional tournament, so it all comes down to one day. To be able to say we've got 21 guys to that tournament is something to be proud of. We went from no All-Americans to seven All-Americans and an individual national title. Uh, to speak on him real quick, his name's Garrett Gray. Uh, he is now my head assistant coach. Um, phenomenal young man. Came from Clay, Ohio. Uh, recruited him out to Westgate, believe it or not. And uh, when you meet Garrett, you'll understand this next comment. Uh, when I told him that calf was all you could eat, he said he was in. <laughs> um, <laughs> With all that we have accomplished in this short time, uh, I can't wait to see with this facility what it's going to help us accomplish in the future, not only for the men's program, but for the women's program as well. Um, I have a long list of thank yous, and I hope we can get through them all, and uh, I don't miss anybody, and if I did, I apologize. First off, I want to say something to Lonnie Allen and President Schumacher and our board. Thank you for having the faith in me and our program and our student-athletes to not only get behind this building in Larry and Jeannie's honor, but to also start the women's program. To me, it only grows wrestling even bigger, even stronger, and continues to grow our student populace. To Orion and the maintenance crew, Deb and the housekeepers, and I'm not sure if she's here, but especially Michelle, thank you for always being with us. Uh, she's like the team mom. Um, can't do it without her either. Klaus Construction, Lenny, Adam, Matt, Scott, you guys were all fantastic to work with. Thank you for involving me in the process and asking about everything, making this the best wrestling facility possible. All the donors that are here today and those that aren't, thank you so much for everything. Without you guys, none of this is possible. Uh, Congressman Jordan, thank you for being here. Um, your family, yourself personally, uh, myself personally, with you guys, thank you. If you've always been there for wrestling. Uh, your family's been there for me as well. Thank you for that. Um, Larry and Jeannie, for always being involved in the Tiffin community, for always looking out for the community, for being great role models for all of us to follow. And getting to know Larry has helped, me, has helped show me even more that we should never sell ourselves short and that the best business is done from the heart. Mike and Dolores Herbert, um, I, don't know, uh, I don't even know how to say thank you to you guys for believing in me in the first place. Uh, going back to our first meeting, Mike, sitting in my office a couple Januarys ago, uh, I thought you were a little bit crazy that we could pull it off. Um, <laughs> and then to our first meeting with Mike, Fred, and Mark sitting at Bob Evans and uh, getting to know those guys and hear those stories and hear stories about Larry uh, absolutely blew my mind. And for those guys to think that I was good enough or worthy to be associated with a man like Larry, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, my family. Um, my mom and dad, they made it up. Um, my wife and kids are here. 
Thank you for understanding the long nights. Thank you for understanding the interrupting phone calls, whether it be date night, movie time, dinner, whatever it may be. Thank you for understanding wrestling to me is not a life, or excuse me, <laughs> it's not a job, it's a lifestyle. Um, finally, I want to thank wrestling. Uh, wrestling's taught me a lot. It's, it's beat me up, it's left me broken, but it's always taught me to pick myself up. And no matter what, at the end of the day, I'll always be a wrestler, and I'm very thankful for it. Thank you, guys.